Transistors, capacitors, LEDs and resistors. These are all used in this simple festive circuit board decoration to automatically turn the lights on and off in this pattern. I'm going to show you how the circuit works and also how to build your own in this video and you can even download my circuit board design to build it yourself. Links for that in the video description down below. This circuit is based on something called an A-stable multivibrator or a flip-flop. A flip-flop circuit simply turns the LEDs on and off alternatively. We can change how fast this occurs by changing the components. We will need some transistors, which act as electronic switches. Basically, they prevent current passing through them until a small amount of power is applied to the base pin. You can see here that the LED circuit is connected across a transistor, but it doesn't turn on. It's only when we apply a voltage and a current to the base pin that the transistor allows the current to flow through the main circuit and turn the LED on. The transistor needs around 0.7 volts at the base pin to turn on. We also need some capacitors, which basically charge up and store electrons when a battery is applied, but then releases the electrons to power the circuit when the battery is removed. You can see here that when I remove the power supply, the LED turns off instantly. But when I connect a capacitor to the circuit, the capacitor powers the LED when the power supply is removed. We can slow down the charging and discharging time of the capacitor by connecting it to a resistor. These resistors limit the current, which means they limit how many electrons can flow through the wire and therefore into or out of the capacitor at a certain amount of time. Then we use some LEDs, which basically produce light when electrons pass through them. These are very sensitive to current and will be destroyed if too many electrons are allowed to pass through them. So we need to connect a resistor to protect them. The resistor can also control how brightly the LEDs shine. The circuit schematic for a simple flip-flop looks like this. We can then convert this into a physical circuit board using a breadboard and I highly recommend that you try to build this yourself to help you understand how it works. When we connect a power supply, we see the circuit board begins to flash the LEDs. So what's happening here? When we connect the power supply, the current is going to flow through resistor 3 and into the base pin of transistor 1. This will turn the transistor on and so a current can then flow through resistor 1 and LED 1. This causes electrons to be pulled into capacitor 1 through resistor 2 and build up on the right hand side. When the voltage of capacitor 1 reaches 0.7 volts, this will open the base pin of transistor 2 and turn it on. This allows current to flow through resistor 4 and LED 2, which causes electrons to be pulled into capacitor 2 through resistor 3. This causes transistor 1 to turn off. When the voltage across capacitor 2 reaches 0.7 volts, it turns transistor 1 on and transistor 2 off. This then repeats constantly, causing the LEDs to alternatively turn on and off. On our decoration, we have three different sets of LEDs. So we will modify this circuit to include another row. Capacitor 1 connects to transistor 2, capacitor 2 connects to transistor 3, and capacitor 3 connects back to transistor 1. For the power supply, we can't use standard batteries because they are just too big. We will instead use a 3 volt cell as these are very compact. I'm going to use the lithium CR2450 as these have a large energy capacity. We then need a switch to turn the circuit board on and off. The decoration needs multiple LEDs to turn on at the same time. We have five LEDs per transistor. As we only have a three volt supply, we can only use LEDs with low forward voltages, such as red and yellow. We will need to connect these in parallel so that they all get the same voltage. If they were in series, the voltage drop would be too much. The forward voltage of the LED is around 1.8 volts and we have a three volt supply. So we will need a resistor. We can place a resistor before each LED or we can use a single resistor 
to limit the total current. This is just a simple circuit, so we will use a shared resistor. As the voltage to the LED varies, the current and brightness change also. We don't want the LEDs to shine too brightly, as this will not look very good. So we will aim for around 10 milliamps per LED. As we have five LEDs, these will add together to get 50 milliamps. Three volts from the battery subtract the 1.8 volts of the LED, leaves us with 1.2 volts, which we need to remove. So 1.2 volts divided by the total current of 0.05 amps equals 24 ohms. That means the resistor we need is 24 ohms. Now, I don't have any 24 ohm resistors, so I will instead use a 22 ohm resistor, which will work fine for this application. The yellow LED will require a slightly higher resistor, but the 22 ohm will work fine for this project. Now, for the transistor. We have two types, the NPN and the PNP type. For this application, we will require an NPN transistor. Most standard small transistors will probably work fine for this circuit, but I'm going to use the BC547 as this will suit our voltages and currents very well. By the way, we have covered how transistors work in detail in our previous video, links down below for that. Now, the capacitor and resistor are going to determine how fast the LEDs will flash. We could calculate this to get an approximate answer, but instead we're going to plug components in and see what happens. So if we use a 10 kilo ohm resistor and a 100 microfarad capacitor, we see the circuit works very well. If I change this to a 1000 microfarad capacitor, the circuit is very, very slow. If I change this to a 10 microfarad capacitor, we see it is very fast. So the larger the capacitor, the slower the flashing will be. The resistor also changes the charging time. If I use a 100 microfarad capacitor and a 10 kilo ohm resistor, it flashes quite fast. If we use a 47 kilo ohm resistor, we see it is very slow. If we use a 1 kilo ohm resistor, it flashes very, very fast. So the larger the resistor, the slower the flashing. I'm going to use a 22 kilo ohm resistor and a 100 microfarad capacitor because I think this works well and it looks very nice. And also the capacitor is physically quite small. So I've tested my design on a breadboard and we can see it is working very well. Now we need to design the PCB. Now to design the PCB, we're going to be using Altim Designer who have kindly sponsored this video. All of our viewers can get a free trial of the software and I'll leave a link for you in the video description down below. So do check that out. Okay, so I'm going to give a quick walkthrough of this part, but we start a new project and then we start to add our components in. There is an inbuilt feature for this, but I'm going to use an add-on, which I think makes it a little easier and simpler to import from a supplier's website. Luckily for this design, many of the components are the same, so we can just duplicate them and then arrange them. Then we start to connect the components together, connecting the LEDs, the capacitor, the resistors, the power supply and the transistors and also the switch. So your schematic should look something like this. You'll want to then configure the annotations also. Then we import the components to the PCB and then we define the board shape. I'll leave the star shape file in the video description for you to download also. Then we place the components on the board in the order you wish until it looks something like this. It's important to place the LEDs in the correct order, group one, group two, and group three. Then we will use the auto route to connect everything together but we must then inspect the board and make any modifications if needed. After that, we create the polygon and finally we export the files. So that's the board designed. Now we just need to order it and then build it. To order the PCB, we just head to jlcpcb.com who have also kindly sponsored this video. They offer exceptional value with five circuit boards from just $2. 
I'll leave a link for you in the video description down below. Do please check that out. And don't forget, you can download my PCB file using the link in the video description also. So we then upload our Gerber files and then check the preview. It looks good. So we can then change the color of the board if we wanted to, but I'm going to leave it green and then head to the checkout. I enter my shipping address, I choose a postage option, and then I pay. A few days later, my circuit board arrives in the post and they really look very good. So we are ready to now build the circuit. Now that our circuit board has arrived, we can start soldering the components to the board. It doesn't take very long, and we should then have something like this at the end. So, when I connect the power supply and switch the circuit on, we see the lights flashing in sequence. We can then display our decorative circuit board and admire our work. So, what do you think? Let me know in the comment section down below. By the way, you can build even more circuit boards using these videos on screen now. Don't forget to follow us on Facebook, LinkedIn, Instagram, Twitter, TikTok, and theengineeringmindset.com.